Welcome to Terminology in Healthcare and Public Health Settings, Endocrine System. This is Lecture A, Overview of the Endocrine System, Adrenal Glands, and Pancreas. In this lecture, we will be studying the endocrine system. A doctor who treats diseases of the endocrine system is called an endocrinologist. The objectives for the endocrine system are to define, understand, and correctly pronounce medical terms related to the endocrine system, describe common diseases and conditions with an overview of various treatments related to the endocrine system. The endocrine system is composed of eight endocrine glands that assist in regulating our body's activities. The endocrine glands are found in various locations throughout our body, as we will see in a minute. The actions of the endocrine glands also have effects throughout the body. All endocrine glands secrete hormones, or chemical messengers, directly into the bloodstream, where they are transported to cells that are waiting for their messages. These hormones help your body respond to stress, regulate your blood pressure, and regulate your water and salt balance. The eight endocrine glands include the adrenal glands, the pancreas, specifically the islets of Langerhans, the pituitary gland, the pineal gland, the ovaries, the testes, the thyroid gland, and thymus gland. Some of the endocrine glands also have additional functions in addition to producing hormones. Examples are the pancreas, the testes, and ovaries. The slide shows the various locations of the following endocrine glands throughout your body. The thyroid gland is in the neck. The thymus gland is in the middle of the chest. The adrenal gland is right on top of the kidney. The pancreas is between your two kidneys. The ovaries and testes are in the lower part of the abdomen. Hormones are natural chemicals produced and released by the endocrine glands. Hormones are thought of as our body's chemical messengers. The eight endocrine glands secrete hormones into our bloodstream. In the bloodstream, these chemical messengers go to various organs and tissues to generate a specific reaction by the body. The organs and tissues are affected by their presence. The presence of hormones results in changes such as growth and development of our bodies. Hormones can act in minutes, hours, or even weeks. Hormones also affect metabolic processes, digestion, blood pressure regulation, reproduction and sexual function, and even our moods. Hormones are powerful. Having too little or too much of a hormone causes various hormone disorders. The level of hormones that is secreted into our bloodstream can be affected by factors such as stress, infections, and changes in the levels of our blood's fluids, causing disturbances such as electrolyte imbalances. When your body does not respond to hormones the way it is supposed to, hormone diseases can occur. One of the most common endocrine diseases in the United States is diabetes. We will learn more about diabetes when we discuss the endocrine gland known as the pancreas. An adrenal gland is located near the top of each kidney, which is why the adrenal glands are also referred to as the suprarenal glands. Each gland has two layers, an outside layer called the adrenal cortex, and the inner layer referred to as the medulla. The adrenal cortex secretes three types of hormones that are referred to as corticosteroids. Each one affects the body in a different way. One helps the body to regulate the metabolism and level of glucose. Another hormone, aldosterone, assists the body in maintaining an electrolyte balance. The last type of hormone produced by the adrenal cortex contributes to the development of secondary sexual characteristics and are essential for reproduction. 
The adrenal medulla secretes two hormones that are responsible for physiological changes that enable us to respond to and react to stress. One example of an adrenal gland disorder is Addison's disease. This is also called adrenal insufficiency, adrenocortical hypofunction, and hypocortisolism. Addison's disease occurs if the adrenal glands don't make enough of the hormones that help your body respond to stress, regulate your blood pressure, and regulate your water and salt balance. How does someone get Addison's disease? Sometimes, when people have problems with their immune system and it attacks their own tissues, damage to the adrenal glands can occur. Symptoms of Addison's disease include weight loss, muscle weakness, fatigue that increases over time, low blood pressure, and patchy or dark skin. Diagnostic tests such as ACTH or cortisol test are examples of laboratory tests that help in the diagnosis of Addison's disease. The treatment is to take hormone medication for the remainder of your life. A number of diseases can affect the adrenal glands, including several types of cancer. Examples include adrenocortical carcinoma, which is cancer in the outer part of the gland, neuroblastoma, a type of childhood cancer, and pheochromocytoma, which is a tumor of the medulla that causes hypertension, weight loss, and personality changes in the patient. Fortunately, adrenal gland cancers are uncommon. Most tumors of the adrenal glands are non-cancerous adenomas and usually do not result in symptoms that would lead to treatment. Possible treatments that a physician could consider in the treatment of these types of cancers of the adrenal gland include surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation therapy. The pancreas is a long, soft organ that lies behind your stomach and in front of your spine. As one of the endocrine glands, it is responsible for making insulin and producing or secreting enzymes or chemicals that assist the body in the digestion of food. Because this gland releases digestive enzymes that are carried through a duct in the duodenum, it is also referred to as an exocrine gland which is defined as a gland that produces and sends its chemicals using a tube or duct. The endocrine function takes place in the pancreatic islets that secrete glucagon and insulin. More specifically, the alpha cells secrete the hormone glucagon in response to a low level of glucose in the blood. Insulin, the hormone produced by the beta cells in the pancreatic islets, is produced in response to a high level of glucose in the blood. Diabetes is a disorder that is identified when your blood glucose or blood sugar level remains above the normal levels. With type 1 diabetes, your pancreas does not make insulin. Insulin is a hormone that helps glucose be absorbed into your cells to allow them to create energy. Without insulin, too much glucose stays in your blood. With this excess insulin, damage can occur to your heart, eyes, kidneys, nerves, and even the gums and teeth. Symptoms of type 1 diabetes include being very thirsty, urinating frequently, feeling very hungry or tired, losing weight without trying, having sores that heal slowly, having dry, itchy skin, losing the feeling in your feet or having tingling in your feet, having blurry eyes. A blood test can determine if you have diabetes. If you are diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, then you will probably have to take insulin for the rest of your life. There is a new experimental treatment which transplants the islet cells from an organ donor to the body of another person. The islet cells contain beta cells, which make the insulin that our body needs, and the transplant would provide a natural source of insulin. Type 2 is the more common type of diabetes. With type 2 diabetes, your body does not make enough insulin, or the insulin it makes is not used well. While some people have no symptoms, others have fatigue, thirst, weight loss, blurred vision, 
and frequent urination. A blood test can be used to diagnose type 2 also. The treatment may include exercise, weight control, and sticking to a diabetic diet, as well as monitoring your glucose level and taking oral medications. Some patients with type 2 diabetes also have to take insulin. As you recall, the pancreas is also considered an accessory GI organ. Pancreatitis, or inflammation of the pancreas, is a disease that occurs when digestive enzymes start digesting the pancreas and nearby tissues. It can be categorized as either acute or chronic. Acute pancreatitis means inflammation of the pancreas and can occur suddenly. It has to be treated urgently since it can be life-threatening and cause complications. The most common cause of pancreatitis is a gallstone that causes the inflammation as it passes through the common bile duct. Other causes include heavy alcohol use, abdominal trauma, medications, tumors, or other infections. Chronic pancreatitis refers to an inflammation of the pancreas that does not improve and progressively worsens until organ damage occurs. The most common cause is heavy alcohol use, which occurs over a number of years. A number of other diseases and medicines can also cause chronic pancreatitis. Symptoms for acute pancreatitis include swollen and tender abdomen, nausea and vomiting, fever, a rapid pulse. Symptoms for chronic pancreatitis include some of the same symptoms, but have additional ones also. Nausea, vomiting, weight loss, diarrhea, oily stools. A variety of procedures can be used to diagnose both acute and chronic pancreatitis. For example, abdominal ultrasound, computerized tomography, also known as a CT scan, endoscopic ultrasound, or EUS, magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography, or MRCP. Treatments for acute pancreatitis include intravenous fluid, antibiotics, pain medications, therapeutic endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, or ERCP. Treatment for chronic pancreatitis may require the patient to be hospitalized for some of the same treatments, such as IV fluid or pain management. In addition, these patients may require nutritional support with nasogastric feedings.
Cystic fibrosis, or CF, is a genetic disorder in which thick, sticky mucus can block the tubes in your pancreas, as well as other locations in the body. CF is an inherited disease of the mucus and sweat glands. It affects mostly your lungs, pancreas, liver, intestines, sinuses, and sex organs. CF causes your mucus to be thick and sticky. The mucus clogs the lungs, causing breathing problems and making it easy for bacteria to grow. This can lead to problems such as repeated lung infections and lung damage. The symptoms and severity of CF vary widely. Some people have serious problems from birth. Others have a milder version of the disease that doesn't show up until they are teens or young adults. Diagnostic tests include CF gene mutation test, CF respiratory screen, sputum, sweat, as in perspiration, test, trypsin and chymotrypsin tests, trypsinogen test. Although there is no cure for CF, Treatments have improved greatly in recent years. Until the 1980s, most deaths from CF occurred in children and teenagers. Today, with improved treatments, people with CF live on average to be more than 35 years old. Both the endocrine and exocrine cells in the pancreas can form tumors. However, tumors more commonly occur in the exocrine cells of the pancreas. These are referred to as adenocarcinomas, which indicates the cancer has started in the gland. While some tumors are benign, or non-cancerous, the majority are malignant, or cancerous. Cancer of the pancreas is the fourth leading cause of cancer death in the U.S. Some risk factors for developing pancreatic cancer include smoking, long-term diabetes, chronic pancreatitis, Certain Hereditary Disorders Pancreatic cancer is hard to catch early. It doesn't cause symptoms right away. When you do get symptoms, they are often vague or you may not notice them. They include yellowing of the skin and eyes, pain in the abdomen and back, weight loss and fatigue. Also, because the pancreas is hidden behind other organs, healthcare providers cannot see or feel the tumors during routine exams. Because it is often found late, and it spreads quickly. Pancreatic cancer can be hard to treat. Each type of tumor has different symptoms, and each is diagnosed by using different diagnostic tests. The treatment options and survival rates vary depending on the type of tumor identified. Possible treatments include surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. Treatment is determined by the stage of the cancer. Staging refers to how far the cancer has progressed. A neonatologist is called to the newborn nursery to evaluate a baby. What is a likely diagnosis given the following facts? Baby is a Caucasian male. 
Baby experienced no bowel movements in the first 24 to 48 hours. Abdomen bloated. Physician orders a sweat chloride test. Did you guess cystic fibrosis? Cystic fibrosis is caused by a defective gene, which causes the body to produce abnormally thick and sticky fluid, called mucus. This mucus builds up in the breathing passages of the lungs and in the pancreas and the intestines. Symptoms related to the bowel function include abdominal pain, increased bloating, no bowel movements in the first 24 to 48 hours of life. Diagnostic tests include CF gene mutation test, CF respiratory screen, sputum, sweat test or sweat chloride test ordered, trypsin and chymotrypsin tests, trypsinogen test. This concludes Lecture A of the Endocrine System. In summary, we covered the adrenal glands and pancreas and a general overview of the endocrine system.